Good morning, pregame crew. It is Friday, July 16th. We will officially get started in five minutes. I got a question over in the TCG room and I told her that I would answer her live versus typing it out. The question is, when we say bottom fish, what do we mean? And when we say squeeze, what does that mean? So bottom fish, when we say bottom fish, that means that we are attempting to enter long in a name where price is coming down to support. So in this case, just because I have the ES chart up, a bottom fish would be, here's the low, 4332, then we get that high, and we come down on, let's just say on an hourly time frame, and then we try to bottom fish the hourly higher low. So that is what a bottom fish is when you're entering off of a support. And a lot of times when we say bottom fish, we mean that we are bottom fishing something that's really crushed and we're looking, thank you, and we're looking to go long in something that's crushed. So that was XBI yesterday and I'll show you that chart in just a second. Good morning, good morning. My husband just brought me Zyrtec so I won't sneeze on y'all. Hey D-Man, good morning. Hey Barry, Tammy, Bobo, Francesca. Hey Sue, Dawn, Brian, Cindy, Luke. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for sharing your Friday morning with me. I go live Monday through Friday and we prep for the trading day. Okay, that makes sense. Awesome, I'm glad that made sense. My explanation, okay, a squeeze. What a squeeze means is something is building pressure. So if you're interested in my chart setup, you can take a screenshot, the yellow and purple, green, red. These are my 50, 200 simple moving average, eight and 21 EMA. And the yellow candles are just inside bars to help pop out for my eyes. So, so many of y'all are so helpful. Somebody saw me struggling yesterday with my mouse and they reminded me that I needed to do a Windows update and told me how to do so. So I appreciate all the help that y'all give me. I know, I, again, I appreciate it. Okay, so what was I doing? Oh, I wanted to show you a squeeze. Newmont Mining, I was just doing some scans this morning and Newmont Mining, a lot of gold names came up on my scans because they're building pressure. So Tammy, when we say squeeze, these are the red dots. This is the TTM squeeze, think or swim default. And this is when price is going sideways. So when price goes sideways, the pressure is building. So if this were a, let's say that we have a tire gauge thing, you know, that you stick into your tire to see what the PSI is, the pressure per square inch. So I'm looking for really high PSI. I'm looking for high pressure as a day trader because I want something to explode either to the upside or to the downside. So like Newmont Mining, because it's going sideways for so long, we have a lot of pressure building in this name. So when I'm doing my morning prep, I asked the room last night, what could I do to make the pregame show better? And they said, show us your prep. So what I do, a lot of my prep is I am just scanning names and I'm looking for pressure. And I, I like to scan names that have news associated with it. Let me show you a name that didn't make the cut this morning, United Healthcare. This name got tons of upgrades, tons, and had great earnings. We're right up here near the all-time high. Let's see, all-time high over here, 425.98. This chart's beautiful, nothing wrong with it. I guess we did have a squeeze on the four hour, but you see on the hourly, we had a squeeze back here, but there's nothing really building. I'm putting my pressure gauge in this tire, i.e. the chart, and it's just showing me there's not a lot of pressure building. I love trading United Healthcare. It can have some really explosive moves and it can have explosive moves without a squeeze. But the squeeze tells me when there's really a lot of pressure building. So if you want to trade United Healthcare, it's so close to the all-time high. This could be a great name to trade today. For me, it wasn't a perfect, well, not that I'm looking for perfect setups. There's hardly a perfect setup, but it didn't, it just didn't appeal to me. It had a great move yesterday. So but if you like it, you could go along United Healthcare. So that's what we mean when we say squeeze. All right, it's 8.30 Eastern, 6.30 Mountain Time. My name is Chart Gal Lori. I am a Chart Guys, Chart Gal, and I'm a partner with the Chart Guys. We do technical analysis and we teach technical analysis. We have a swing report service, which is what I'll start working on today after market close. 
my team, we have a team of four of us that we work, actually five of us, that we work on the swing report every weekend and we curate names for the upcoming week that may be in a position to swing. We have Trader Pro alerts where we send alerts on crypto, which right now crypto is getting absolutely destroyed. So uh, we have lots of services as part of the chart, guys. In this pregame show, I do Monday through Friday. It lasts about 20 to 25 minutes. And what I do is go over the Fab Four futures, commodities, crypto, and movers and shakers of the day. If you had a great trade this week, share it with us. Put it in the comments. Let me know. I want to know what how y'all are doing out there. If the show is helping, I, I want to know. If it's not helping, if you need more help with a specific thing, let me know. We love feedback. All right, ES, we have a green morning. We have a tiny green morning. This is nothing to write home about to mom. I mean, this is just a tiny green morning. RTY is bouncing the hardest, but you see we're running into this hourly 50 MA. I have IWM on my list, but you see it's not red or green because I, I it's hard to go short down here when it's pretty beat up. It's been picked on for a long time. And also, what, what time frame did I see that? Actually, I saw it on IWM, so one second. It kind of looked like an inverse head and shoulders set, setting up, but I I just can't go long IWM, IWM because it has been so weak. I went, I gave the setup yesterday for a potential oversold bounce, but at this point, you look at the momentum, it's all pointing down. I am in love with IWM options. I've been playing them a lot more. They just move so nicely and they're so liquid. So uh, back to RTY is bouncing. We are running into the hourly 50 MA. Then we have the next biggest bouncer is the NASDAQ. And then YM. I'm getting everything out of order. Okay, let's start over, Lori. RTY, biggest bouncer, then NASDAQ, then ES, and then YM. YM is up near the all-time high. So the Dow has definitely been holding up better. Bank earnings had a killer week, even though it wasn't reflected in price. But I did notice a lot of bank upgrades came in this morning. So something to be aware of. I didn't even check. Is my sound okay? Do I love cars? I do love cars. And um, my dad's a mechanic. So I was raised around a lot of car talk. He is a diesel mechanic, but nonetheless, I actually have a huge passion for cars. All right, everybody can hear me. The sneeze shield, yes. All right, now I will keep going. So my story of the day, I like to give you a theme of the day. What's the theme? The theme is we're looking for four hour lower high on NASDAQ. And I think that will be the theme of the day. We are running into the underside of the four hour 21 EMA. We're looking for that lower high. How will I know the four hour lower high is set? Well, my first clue will be the 15 minute trend change, loss of an uptrend. So right now we have this 15 minute uptrend chug -a -lug and along. When we lose the 15 minute uptrend, we get that last higher high, higher low, lower high roll over. Then that would be a sign for me to go short the NASDAQ. And this is the clearest setup that I see this morning actually is on QQQ futures, i.e. NASDAQ, is we're looking for a four hour lower high. So I wouldn't get too bullish the market today. Be careful, be protective. There, there, it doesn't mean there's not some longs out there, but that is my story of the day. If the NASDAQ sets that four hour lower high, then Apple Lottos will be my king of the mountain trade to the downside. Yep, I can't believe I'm saying it either. My daughter made fun of me. She's like, mom, you just kept saying yesterday, I can't believe I'm saying it. I can't believe I'm saying go long AMC. Well, I'm doing it again this morning. I am looking short Apple around 148.89, which is where we are. This 0.618 retracement from yesterday's move is where I would look to go short Apple. And I will be watching market internals. Y'all know that tells me that's my dashboard. Here I go with car analogies again to see who's driving the, the car, who's driving the bus and how fast they're driving it. And the market internals will tell me if my Apple put lotto ideal will work. So here are the levels for the Apple. So those are my two stories of the day. NASDAQ four hour, looking for that lower high. And when it's set, I will then be looking for Apple short. You see those if then statements? Yes, I took Pascal programming over at LSU and I was terrible at it, but I do understand if then. 
All right, so NASDAQ, let me go back up to ES and let's give you levels. So ES, same thing, we're looking for that four hour lower high, but do you see how ES has cleared the EMAs? So it's looking a little bit healthier than NASDAQ. Your resistance on ES, 4370 is your next resistance, then 4376, support 4345, 4338. Is this monthly? Yes, today is monthly expiration on op, on uh, options, so they call it OPEX day, options expiration day. This is monthly OPEX, so we could have some volatility going into the end of the day, so just be careful and just know that that's happening. So with NASDAQ, your next resistance is up at 1496275, and your next support is at 14760 and 14736. YM, we said it is definitely the healthiest and it has a lot of bank names in it. So YM is looking good. We have resistance 34939, then 34946. Support is down at 34849, 34826. RTY, resistance 2200. And above 2200 is 2219. Support 2191, 2189. So I want to talk about the EMAs a little bit more. We've talked about them and I've been bringing more attention and highlighting EMAs and that separation where it pinballs and it just kind of flippers the price down. So we had that pinball move on RTY where it just flippered the price down. So, but it's tough to short down here when we have this big gap between the EMAs and price. I'm waiting for that snap back to those EMAs and then that would be a nice area for me to go short RTY, IE, IWM again. So it, the separation from the EMAs and it's been so beat up, it's hard for me to short it down here. I call that shorting in the hole. I don't want to short in the hole. GC, GC is really jumping out at me for a potential short on the daily, we are running into the 50 and 200 MA. So for me, this is a short area for gold. I don't like gold here to the long side at all. So we have lost our four hour uptrend. Resistance is up at 1832, 1835. Support is at 1804 and 1798. We have the bear volume starting to increase on gold futures. All right. It, it just and they're the same. So NQ is, is the boss and QQQ is spot price following the boss. So NQ and QQQ are the same. So let me give you, show you in QQQ terms. You see how it's the same? So we're up at the EMAs in the four hour. So I am looking for a lower high on the four hour compared to 36466. Now the size of this balance, we've given ourselves enough room to get a higher low on the pullback. So on a pullback, I would not expect it to completely roll over. The odds favor that we could get a higher low with how the size of this bounce. Now let me show you in NASDAQ. So NASDAQ, you see the size of this bounce? Odds favor a higher low when we do pull back. This isn't a bear flag anymore. A bear flag has this little 30% retrace and then it rolls back over. This is not that. So we are running into the EMAs. I'm expecting a lower high, but it doesn't mean it's it's party over for the bulls. Okay, CL. Oil, we had a great short yesterday while live. I love when that happens. We have nice clear setups. Uh, I said I would put the stop over $73. If I were not live, I would be shorting oil and that was a nice short. But don't get it twisted. On the weekly, we are still above the eight EMA on oil. Oil has been a trend trade with weekly closes above, meaningful closes above the EMA since May. So don't get too twisted on oil. We did hold this key support of 7076. So right now we're still in a weekly inside bar. We have rig count, I believe at 1030 central. I'm not sure, but we have rig count on Fridays. Just be aware of that if you're trading it. Bitcoin, man, man, man. And I say that because I just know a lot of people are getting hurt and that breaks my heart. So we have support at 31316. Let me slow down. We have support at 31025 and then 31,000. And below 31,000, your next support is at 30,173. You see the flipper? 
you see this pinball flipper it's just flipping price down we have that separation between the 8 and 21 and it's just pushing price down so hourly is not oversold anymore on Bitcoin four hour not oversold daily not oversold so just be aware of that uh, don't get overly aggressive bottom fishing when we're really not even oversold on a lot of time frames your next resistance on any pop-up is three one come on get out the way three one five six one and three one eight oh two ethereum beat up is it hourly approached oversold four hour not oversold daily not oversold so we just got a nice little pop resistance 1893 1913 support below 1850 is 1800 and then 1717 apple man what a beautiful chart we've been admiring this chart for a while huh so i was i plotted these fibs i was looking at the potential next target for apples up at 152.95 from a swing perspective, but today I'm looking for this to potentially play out. I'm looking to short Apple if or when NASDAQ loses the 15 minute uptrend, I would look for Apple puts and I would, and since it's a lotto day, I would probably go for 148 puts. What do I mean by that? Right now, look over here to the right. Price is at 148.92. So I would be looking for price to go down around a dollar. So that's out of the money. So you see OTM a lot, that's out the money. ATM is at the money and ITM is in the money. So typically I'm gonna be in or right at the money, but I would go OTM for lottos because that's the nature of a lotto is you're going out of the money and you're I'm defining my risk and my lotto plays are typically around $500. And let's just say that my normal options position can be anywhere from five to $10,000. So I really bring that size down on a lotto trade and I'm going out, out of the money. And if it were to hit, it could be two to 300%. So if we could approach 149.38 and NASDAQ get a 15 minute trend change to the downside, then I would like Apple puts. CentOS, CentOS, let's look at this chart. Look at this beautiful weekly uptrend. So we had a squeeze here, we had a nice pop. We had earnings, but obviously whomever had it thought that the it was priced to perfection and they started selling it. Well, now we have four hour oversold, and I'm gonna to try to talk slower because this is important. Four hour oversold in a weekly uptrend that's a bottom fish, Tammy. That is exactly what we mean when we say bottom fish. Weekly uptrend, beautiful chart. Daily getting beat up because of earnings. We had three upgrades come in this morning. So this is a king of the mountain trade for me. And I'd say it's about a 6.5 out of 10 to go to the long side. And that's if the market's bouncing, it will help it. Doesn't mean it can't bounce without the market, but it would do better if the market were to go up as well. And it's part of the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ hits that four hour lower high early on in the day, this, this play would fizzle. So Apple puts, that's about a six out of 10. King of the mountain, y'all yeah, also told me in the room that y'all like it when I say king of the mountain. And you also like it when I give my conviction. IWM, it's my favorite trade trading vehicle as of late. I have my alert set for just this general area to potentially short IWM again, but I just can't short it down here. LB, I don't know why I keep picking on LB. I just, I still don't like it. It was gave us a great short here. And then Invicta in the room, he held his short yesterday way better than I did. He had a great short on it. So if we were to break the low of yesterday, the next support would be 7176. This is a seven out of 10 for me, King of the Mountain trade short again on LB. So I would actually like to swing this short. They had that terrible offering and maybe I just have, you know, a bias against Victoria's Secret bras or something. I don't know what, they, what they've ever done to me, but I, obviously have issues with LB. Resistance 74.73 and then 75.36. I uh, would love to short 75.50 again. Mele, Mele, uh, Mele. Okay, so Mele had an upgrade, a beautiful upgrade from 1700 to 1900. When you see those 
upgrades, they price target changes, and they increase it by a couple hundred dollars, even though this is a $1,500 name. That's pretty impressive. It held this support yesterday. It held this 1477.11. If you trade this with options, just be prepared to, I, I try to use appropriate words, but just don't get rammed, if you know what I mean, with, uh, with the prices on options, the spreads are terrible on Melly, absolutely terrible. So let your limit order sit there. And if it doesn't get filled, it doesn't get filled. Or you could play it with commons. But I like this to the long side. If the market were to bounce, I like this to the long side. It had a nice upgrade. Resistance 15, 25, 40, support 1488 and 1484. This is only for the experienced options traders because it can be a booger bear to trade, MRNA. MRNA, I was thinking, what am I going to tell them about MRNA? The volume's awesome. So here's all I could come up with, y'all. Five-minute RSI, back burner trade on MRNA. I can't tell you to chase this car. Dogs get ran over when they chase cars. I can't tell you to chase this up here. Only thing we can do responsibly if we're not in is wait for five-minute oversold. I can't tell you to short it because we are in all-time high territory. It's getting added to the S&P, which is great news for MRNA bulls, but chasing it up here, I think, is dangerous. So that's the only responsible trade I can give you is wait for five-minute oversold. Otherwise, you just smile and wave. Just do the pageant wave and wave at it as it goes by. You rock it to the moon, wave. Because if, if you're in, stay in as long as the five-minute, eight, and 21 stay below you, you stay in long. NIO. It's Amazon. That's awesome. Okay. NIO. This is another one. I didn't put a color on it because I'm kind of torn. Uh, if you're in the TCG room, you know I don't like trading this one. So, in and a lot of people make a lot of money on it, but I don't like it. 4477 is resistance. If we were to pop above that one, this would this one could get going. Let's see if I can give you another level. 4465 is your next resistance, then 4477. So Neo could have some nice volatility for Lottos today. I don't like downtrending 50 MAs. I always draw a frown. It, it's a frown for me. It's just showing the price pressure is to the downside. So I would short 44.77 if it were to pop over. I would possibly go long if I were trading it, but I don't like trading it. Now, now I've got to upgrade, and you see this? I put my, my PSI checker, my tire gauge in there, and I've got some pressure building on now. And it had an upgrade this morning. And this one's a little bit easier because the hurdle is lower. So you see that? I just needed over 55953 as that first resistance test to say, oh, I've got friends with me on the trade. I'm going to watch the five-minute volume. I like now to the long side. And now can get some pep in its step. So I like now to the long side. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is beat down. Really, really, really beat down. Four-hour RSI is crushed. It's bouncing right now in pre-market, so I wish it weren't doing that. But I like NVIDIA to the long side. If we can come back closer to 754 or 753, I like NVIDIA. This is a bottom fish. This is what we mean by bottom fish, Tammy. Four-hour RSI got crushed, and we're bottom fishing it to go long. Yes, when I do lottos, I use today's expiration, yes. And it's only when I don't have other things planned. Like if I have if I have a workout or an appointment, I don't play lottos. Lottos have to be very carefully and closely managed. And I on a Friday, if I have anything, which today I don't, but if I have any conflicts, I don't play lottos on Friday because they require very close management. 657.57 is your resistance on Tesla. Here's what I'm seeing for Tesla. So you option sellers, you may be interested in this. Okay, so let's do our path. What time is it? I have 11 minutes. Okay, we got a daily EQ on Tesla. What I see is yesterday's range was about 4%, 4.4%. We're opening right in the middle of that range. You see that? So here's the range and we're opening up right in the middle. To me, this is a premium selling opportunity. Odds favor, now it is Tesla. If it was just some other regular name, I'd say it. the odds are really high, but Tesla can do wonky things. But 
the odds favor is that we're going to get an inside bar today. Do y'all see that? 4.4% move. Now, I don't know what the average true range on Tesla is, the ATR. We talked about Keltner channels and ATR. I guess I could turn it on, huh? Let's see. I guess it didn't get crazy yesterday. Okay, so inside bar odds for Tesla today, which means you could potentially sell an iron condor and sell calls above and sell puts below these two levels. And same thing for the daily. If we can bounce at all to this midpoint, like around 670, that may be an opportunity to sell iron condor below 620 and above 700. We do have earnings coming up, so something to be aware of, but when we get a daily EQ like this and we're in the middle of it, that's a good premium selling opportunity. And that's what I see with Tesla today. Let me make a bold little statement. It would be really cool if Tesla closed around six, what, what's half of that? Y'all come on, help me do the math. So what's half of 666, that's $30, right? Yesterday's range was $30. So add $15 to this, 652, uh, 653. It would be really cool if Tesla could pin 653, that'd be cool. What is the max pain of Tesla, let me. I hope y'all don't mind indulging me with this stuff. And again, my mouse, I'm still struggling. It won't move. Okay, so I'm on Swaggy Stocks, and I'm looking at Options, Max Payne, and for Tesla. The Option Max Payne is 650. Okay, now I'm going to have to show you all this. Y'all are just going to have to bear with me. I don't know why this doesn't work. So on Swaggy Stocks, I clicked on Max Payne Calculator. I typed in Tesla, and today it's 650. What does that mean? That means if price closes near 650, it will cause the max pain to the put buyers and the call buyers. It will cause the max pain. So that even reinforces what my hypothesis is, is that we could pin 650, 653 today. So this will be interesting to see if it'll happen. How would you trade that? You could do a, a butterfly or probably an iron condor is best. QQQ, looking for that four hour lower high, we will see. We got some hungry, hungry hippos out there with these bulls. They love buying QQQ dips. So that idea may go through the window. Okay, SPY is really bouncing now. Your next resistance, 436.40, 437.08. Oh, support, 434.72, 433.72. Okay. Awesome. That's awesome, Teha. That's great. Great to hear. Okay. What time is it? Okay, it's 6.53. We will go live in the TCG room in seven minutes. So TCGers, I'll see you over there. We had fun trading XBI yesterday. Oh, we're looking left with Lamont this morning. Okay, so Dan is commenting on the follow through on QQQ and SPY and I'm noticing it too. So the four hour story may not work on NASDAQ. Let's see. Yesterday's low is super, super important. Then don't forget this 18, six, this one, <laughs> 14,864 prior support may act as resistance as well. So let's see what happens with NQ. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I, it's really an honor to be able to prep with y'all. And I hope you have a safe day and use stop losses.